Hey peeps. So we're going to do a chatty video today. An overwhelming amount of you asked if, uh, well, I did a poll on Instagram in my story recently, and I think it was like 96 or 97% of you said that you would like more chatty videos on the channel. So we are doing some chatty videos today. <laughs> So here we go. We're going to talk about, I don't know, a couple things, but one of you did recently ask if I would talk a little bit about my own personal spiritual practices, like for myself, not just what I talk about with clients, but what I actually do for myself. So I'm definitely going to be talking about that in this video as well. And I do have the Darkwood Tarot and I have the Star Spinner Tarot today. So we might do some card work or draw a card or two while we're talking. We'll see. But um, yeah, uh, just to start out, it's spring here and uh, yeah, it's finally like really actually starting to feel like spring. We've had some slightly warmer days and that's been really nice. You know, when I say warmer, I mean like in the 50s and been excited about that. We did have one day that got up into the 70s, which I was really thrilled about. But I think for me, as a witch this time of year, there's that sense, yes, of maiden energy for sure, you know, of that newness and like, what do you want to create and feeling inspired and all of that beautiful, beautiful energy that's typical to this time of year. But I also think that there's like an awareness of cycles that comes along with spring and with fall especially for me and I'm, most of you guys know that I'm a fall girl so f obviously <laughs> so fall is my favorite time of year and that's the time when I feel like really alive and inspired. I think in the spring I tend to feel like there's a lot of endings and releasings and like realizations that end up happening even though technically according to the wheel of the year it's that time to embrace new uh, new energy, new um, growth in your life. So I would say this spring has brought with it a lot of uh, awarenesses and realizations for me and also some endings too. And I did want to say if you know if you're feeling really isolated and alone or perhaps like you're going through a time of loss and endings maybe with like friendships and relationships in your life, I definitely want to affirm for you that you're not alone. And sometimes when we move and flow with that change, instead of resisting it, we allow ourselves to access the wisdom of the situation or the wisdom, the lesson of the connection or the experience a lot faster and a lot less painfully than when we fight it. So, you know, of course, when I reference that, it makes me think of the tower card in tarot and how when we just kind of allow things to fall apart, our life, it, we flow through the experience and our life comes back to a sense of, um, what's the right word, guys, uh, stabilization a lot faster than if we fight it and we don't want to move with it and we really resist it. Now, if you are um, <laughs> a stubborn earth sign, <laughs> then, uh, then, you know, you can struggle with that. And certainly I'm a Taurus and I do struggle with, you know, change anyhow, but with moving with the change gracefully and allowing things to, to release and to end. So that's always a powerful lesson for me. And it's why I think in the tarot, the tower card can't really be um, read other than what it is. We can we find the beauty and the wisdom in the experience, but we also do have to just kind of know and understand and go with the flow on the fact that like, no, this is like a falling apart. No different than when we see the death card, we know that we're talking about an ending, even as much as we may not want that to end. And so as, as I was just saying, if you're kind of going through that experience, whether you can liken that to the tower or the death card for yourself, um, the best way to work with the energy is to flow with it. And where we feel that resistance, like where maybe we don't want to let go of that relationship or connection or that job or that living space or, um, I don't know, that physical location or even that memory, 
when we look at why we don't want to, sometimes that can help us to like stop having that death grip on something that's actually ready to be transformed into something else. And I think the older I get on my path, and I really, I have such a, a beautiful privilege of working with people, like this is my life. This people going through transformation primarily is my life. Uh, and I think that really has given me the gift of being able to see that everything changes. That is the constant. Death and rebirth, that cycle is a constant. It is the constant. And so as much as we might love something or identify as something or have an attachment to something, at a certain point in time, we will have to release it. We'll have to allow ourselves to step into the next space. And I have actually found that over the years to be very comforting to know that, you know, there is that moment of, or those moments when we want to like keep something the way it is forever, but it can't live if it stays the way it is forever. It ends up being stagnation. It's the beauty of the Four of Grails in Tarot of Vampires when Ian talks about like something being so beautiful but like you've drowned in it to such an extent that it's now stagnant. Like you're literally drowning in something and there's no growth, there's no experience, there's no movement. So um, I think I've been sitting with that a lot this spring but to be very honest, I feel like I'm always looking at that in the springtime. It's not like oh, the flowers are coming up and like, oh, yay, it's more for me. Like, oh, wow, a lot of, there's a lot of transition that's happening right now. So this spring has proven to be no different in that regard. But it is certainly beautiful to watch Mother Nature, to watch Gaia uh, breathe again and um, step into growth on her path. So if you are experiencing that sense of um, being separate or aloneness or that there are some endings or releasings going on in your life and you found your way to this video in the channel, please know that you're not alone and that you are supported in flowing with change and, and not um, resisting it from a space of fear. So in fact, before I talk about the viewer request question, why don't we draw a card on that? So let's let's go with the Darkwood Tarot because she's like one of my main muses these days. I'm just, I, I love this deck so much. To my wonderful tarot friend who recommended this for me and then purchased this deck for me, I just want to say thank you so much. This is like one of my keeper decks. I love her so much. But anyhow, so the card that we're getting in regards to time of transition or if you're experiencing shifts in um, in your life in general, whether that be career, relationship-wise, whatever it may be. The card that we've drawn for this is the devil. So there are a lot of ways that you can interact with this card. Uh, and for some readers, they do choose to go the traditional route, which is kind of themes of subjugation and um, addiction and that very heavy, dark energy. However, for me, when I read with the devil in tarot, I look at the devil as an opportunity to experience a sense of freedom that can come from abandon and releasing ideas we have about ourselves in regards to shame. So if you are experiencing this sense of loss or disconnect or maybe feeling a little bit hopeless, feeling like there's a lot of endings and you're very alone right now, the devil is encouraging you to explore what it is that you find that's a passion for you at this time, to open up to that experience with abandon and to allow yourself to kind of like revel in that feeling of, um, of passion and to not need to tame yourself in order to hopefully make yourself okay enough for whatever it is that you're experiencing this sense of disconnect for in your life. So how can you be authentically yourself? How can you open up to what you feel passion for and allow that to step or to move you into the flow of the change that you're experiencing right now? instead of choosing to stay in a space of fear 
and possibly like even kind of imprisonment in order to stay safe. So what would it feel like to release the shackles of safety and to dance with a sense of abandon? That's what I feel like the devil is saying to us today. And of course, we can look at that in shadow as well. Um, but I don't feel that his message for us is in shadow today. I think it's a message instead of abandonment and passion and pleasure. It's interesting, like abandon, not in the sense of abandoning something, but to release. Again, I, I keep just coming, just hearing that word shackles, to release the, the shackles of something that's been holding us back from a sense of trying to stay safe or make things work or make things okay. So the devil is a very powerful energy for us to work with. And if you really are resonating with this message as you're watching the video, I would encourage you to work with that energy of Pan, um, of the shapeshifter god, of the kind of lord of the forest energy that's very connected to earthiness, to sensuality, to sexuality, and also to the idea of freedom. That can be a really powerful message with this. So... Yeah, so that's kind of what I've been, you know, exploring personally, and I do think times of transition are necessary and powerful, and the more we flow with them, we really have this gift of grace that ends up happening. So, switching gears now to the viewer request question. So the, one of you asked me to talk about what are your personal practices that you actually work with for yourself. And I have to say that I do pretty fairly often practice what I preach. Um, my personal exercises and practices for myself on my spiritual journey, for instance, in what we were just talking about, like when I have times where I do need a sense of support from my spiritual uh, tribe or for my spiritual journey, um, when I do need a sense of not being alone um, and just to keep myself like in good spiritual shape. <laughs> um, I have found that daily draws from tarot are one of my most valuable tools and journaling along with that. And I do try personally for myself at various times of the year to um, work with specific spreads or specific decks in order to really access the wisdom of wherever I'm at. So I don't believe in like trying to push yourself through something. If I'm in a space where I'm really feeling a heaviness or feeling a sense of loss and mourning, I'm the type of individual that will like um, listen to music that makes me cry and do really like uh, in-depth like inner work and inner soul searching and work with that energy. And then in those times when I feel a sense of lightness and creativity and I'm working with the Empress energy in tarot, let's say, I will choose to work with, on my, in as far as my spiritual journey goes, things that create that feeling of lightness for myself, that create an ease of practice. Um, and I have found that to be really impactful for me. And working in accord with the flow of emotionally where I'm at and with whatever's happening in my life has been really sustaining for me on my journey. So core practices for me are daily draws and journaling. And then I do meditative journey with my guides and with deity as often as I possibly can. Now I will say since having a child, my freedom and uh, insofar as like my free time and ability to really have space to do that is a lot more limited than before I had a child. I think that's something that before you become a parent, you don't really understand. Like there is no time for you and the other being has to come first. But in the time that I do have available for myself, whether that's just a few minutes before I go to sleep at night or really early in the morning, I do try to sit in front of my altar or at least sit up in bed and journey with the deity that, <clears throat> excuse me, that I work with on my path. I found that to be um, the most, what's the right word? It's like a bomb to my soul to have that experience. That's when I get direct messages from my guides and my gods. And when I have like, when I can like lay my soul bare and know that I won't be judged, that source is going to be honest with me, but also supportive of me on my journey. 
So that has been, I would say, my number one practice. Um, even over tarot, even though my daily draws are a very close second to that, but spending that time at least once or twice a week since becoming a parent, but before that I really tried to do it every day in my practice, um, really communing with deity and, and um, having a self-led meditative experience with them. So I don't follow like someone else's um, um, guided meditation. I meet with my deity and I have a dialogue or take a shamanic journey with them. And that has been the most powerful and I think um, intense, beautiful spiritual experience of my life. And that's a practice that I've been doing since I started on my own spiritual path and I have no intention of not doing that ever. There is a, something that's very important that the hermit and the hierophant teach us. And this is something that is like core to my teachings as a priestess and a healer too. And that is that we have to access the cycle pomp within. Um, we can all share tips and tricks and spreads and um, card spreads and um, practices that we all uh, find helpful for ourselves. And we can try those and taking, you know, certainly I offer workshops and I take workshops when I feel called to by other priestesses and healers. But in those things are all very powerful and important. But we have to come back to the cycle pomp within. We have to access our own inner wisdom, the high priestess within ourselves, the intuition within ourselves, in order to really um, make the, um, how do I want to say that right? In order to have the most authentic, fulfilled life. So whether you choose to walk a pagan path, a left-hand path, a dark path, a Christian path, anywhere and everywhere in between that. I think the most important thing that I would say to anyone is accessing that psychopomp within and allowing yourself to be led on your path, trusting the messages that you receive from that is the most important thing. And so for myself, uh, as far as you know, practices that I have, those two things are the most important. So daily draws and journaling with tarot. Journaling is very important. It's a way that you can, at least for me, it's a way that I can process my emotions, connect in with the spiritual messages from my guides and my spirit tribe and my higher self for the day, and just like get something out. Sometimes just getting something out on paper for me helps me to release it. And then maybe I don't need to go be a total hot mess with the people in my life because I've spent time, you know, kind of like breaking something down, whether it's an experience or an emotion or a feeling or a choice I made or an action I took or whatever. Getting it out and journaling makes a really big difference for me in my life emotionally and also just to help me stay grounded as well as spiritually. So daily draws with journaling. And the tarot cards always serve as either like a message for me, something to be aware of, or a clue into how I'm actually feeling. So if you've dealt with a lot of trauma in your life, sometimes understanding what you're actually feeling can be really, really difficult. And so your tarot card, your daily draw, whether it's tarot or oracle, but I usually go with tarot, um, that can give you even give you insight into like how you are actually feeling. And that can help you to be like, oh, okay, I understand that now. Accessing awarenesses about yourself that then can allow you to be more grounded and less reactive when you go out there in the human world. So that is very important. The other thing that's the most important practice for me is um, journeying with my guides at least once or twice a week through meditative journey, through shamanic journey. And I have videos on that in the channel and lots of other people do. So if you're feeling called to explore that, you know, you don't, you, you can find that wisdom out there to help you get started. But it's really a self-led practice. It's not something that um, someone can walk you through. Like guided meditation is important for me in workshops, etc. But I do think personally when you're doing like your daily work with your with your goddess or your god or your guide, um, 
that's something that it's important to let higher self lead for you too, because then it's not someone else's agenda or what someone else thinks you should be doing. Instead, it's actually um, what is necessary for you at this time. So that is the other very, like those two things are the pillars of my personal spiritual practice. The other two things that come in there for me, time out in nature, um, especially many of you know the ocean for me. Uh, I need to get to the ocean at least a couple times a month and just be by her and sit with her and like express with her. So if I get to do that alone, that's a really big gift. Or if my son and I go together, um, you know, we try to, as much as, you know, we can, um, hold space for each other to have our own experience at the ocean. And that is really, really healing for me. In addition to that, I, I do like to go hiking or get out in the woods as well. I live in New England, so it's easy to access both of those areas. And... Uh, that is very helpful to me as well. The other thing that I do find valuable to my spiritual practice are in-depth card spreads. Now, when I say that, um, I don't, I'm not someone who does set meanings for spreads typically, but I will do in-depth spreads or card work for uh, shadow work, which is a process of inquiry, which I do have a video on the channel about. And if you mentor with me or if you've done a workshop experience with me, um, you know that this is something that I find to be very important. And it is something that I do for myself, uh, typically like once a month. Um, if not that, then by the moon cycle. I am someone who prefers the dark moon to the full, so I work with the dark moon cycle on this. But uh, I will do... Um, in-depth inquiry work with my cards where I try to get into sticky areas in my life and my own experience and access higher self wisdom from that space um, and I found that to be really important but if you're someone who doesn't work uh, intuitively with large amounts of cards and who prefers card spreads I would say any type of card spread on getting messages from your guides or shadow work spreads you know, spreads that really let you like get into areas of your life and your experience, those are going to be really powerful tools for you on your spiritual path to stay connected to that inner guidance, that inner compass that's directing you on your path forward. Uh, so those things are very important. In addition, I would also say for me, um, because I do identify as a psychic medium, um, cutting energetic cords and attachments with other people as I move through my days because this is my job. Um, my career is working with other people in regards to sessions and readings and workshops. Um, it's very important for me to keep myself energetically very clear. And I, f I have practices on, you know, cutting energetic cords. Um, I work with... Uh, sacred geometry and visualization to help myself keep that clear and those have been very important life and will continue to be lifelong practices for me so those are ways that i keep myself balanced on my spiritual path it's all things that i talk about on the channel and um, i do really feel if you're going to speak to something then you should be walking that path and i do try my level best to always be um walking that path myself as well and because I am someone who has dealt with a significant amount of trauma in my life uh, these are practices that help me deal with things like PTSD anxiety and being an empath as well so if you identify or have struggled with any of those things I you know some of these practices that you'll see offered on my channel um, hopefully they will help you as well to be able to find that centered grounded space within you that inner compass on your path so you're not feeling kind of like blown about by the winds of and the whims of the people or uh, experiences in your life but instead that you are clear on you know the human experience but also the spiritual experience on your physical journey your human journey as well so yeah, so this is my little chatty video today, guys. The first one for April. I'm hoping to at least get one more done this month. And uh, if you guys have anything you want me to talk about in these chatty videos, please feel free to leave me a message below. I have a little book that I try to write everything in so that I can 
make sure I get to everybody's questions at some point, even if it's a year or two down the road. <laughs> I do have them written down, guys, I promise. So anyhow, I am sending you all so much love and many blessings. I hope you are all having a great week, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.